Hey guys, welcome back to this uh, video series where I'm just bringing people into my own personal design process, talking about some of the key decisions that I take as I learn more about uh, what is required to work in uh, warmer climates, um, hot terrain, humid terrain, uh, what uh, some of the things uh, to look out for, including like material choices and a whole load of other things which I'm studying uh, and um, uh, just trying to improve uh, myself as as a designer uh, in my own um, in my knowledge library and I use these little conceptual projects as a way to manifest the things that I find out and and read about and I try to ground them through uh, through applying them practically um, in this case this is building off from a previous video uh, where I spoke about uh, some of the site context uh, thinking for designing a house in the Caribbean. Um, just to recap slightly, uh, this was uh, a quick plan that I drew um, on the video and it, some of the key things that I spoke about were uh, acknowledging the fact that we've got quite a lot of heavy easterly winds that come through the site uh, in this direction. Um, We've got a really nice, healthy amount of sunlight that we want to take and make the most out of uh, without uh, removing any vegetation or trees. Um, and I think as a as a rule of thumb, I think architects now need to be thinking to do uh, the least as possible in terms of impacting the natural environment that is already there. So we want to keep as many of the trees and, and bushes and shrubs and vegetation there as possible, that they already act as a natural form of shading uh, and cooling and ventilation for the site in general. Um, and so we spoke about how we could mimic the footprint of the existing uh, site, which currently consists of a couple of uh, redundant stone walls looking for a new purpose in life. Um, and so we could propose potentially a new building for uh, someone to stay on a short term basis or to use for small community events and um, uh, little uh, ways in which the community can come together um, and acknowledging the fact that there's also a river uh, coming down on this side. Um, and this is a section that I've been working on. Um, it's uh, a typical way of working for me. I like to draw big scale um, and uh, I like to get into things um, at a slower pace. Um, and yeah, this is uh, cutting through the building um, in section, so like that. So it's a cross section. So we're, we're seeing everything that's inside the building that way. Um, the section allows for us to start uh, seeing how the structure is taking place and what, what some of the materials and um, things to think about are in the design. So in this case, um, some of the things that I've been working with are raising the roof. So having um, a roof structure that is higher, typically than most roof structures, particularly that you'd find in uh, cooler Western um, or, nor uh, or countries that might be in the Northern hemisphere. Uh, the reason for this is that um, uh, ventilation is probably one of the most important um, uh, uh, management um, systems to kind of think about when working in really hot places, because we don't want to live in buildings that melt us. So, um, by raising the roof higher, and I think these walls are touching around 3.6 meters to, uh, uh, to, to, to about four, 3.5, three and a half meters or so these, these walls are. So uh, they're quite tall and, and it means that air has uh, more of an ability to rise up um, and escape the building um, outside openings that are raised higher again. Um, and it means that the the area in which the people will be experiencing um, can be kept cooler, which is um, a great thing. So I've been learning about that um, and, and the impact of that, because initially I wasn't, it looked a bit odd to me to initially raise a roof higher. Um, and I wasn't sure what that would mean um, in terms of like st structural rigidity, um, particularly with high winds. But we're, we're gonna kind of go with this in a moment, uh, including, um, Included within this are the addition of um, quite high rise, uh, small window openings. And I've seen this happen a couple of times. I stayed in a couple of places in hot, hotter climates that employ this technique. It's, it's, uh, it's really great to allow air to escape from below and out, but also to allow air to, to flow across the building throughout the day and night time. 
Um, so you'd have windows here which can be used not really for viewing purposes or necessarily to bring in light, but I am wondering if there's a way in which the roof pitch could change um, and, and encourage the accessibility of light from this direction um, as the sun uh, travels um, across the site throughout the day. But at the moment, I'm just thinking about these windows as a way to keep the building cool um, and ventilate it without having to use um, much larger openings on uh, the other, on the gable ends of the building. Um, just to familiarise ourselves, we've got the existing stone structure on this side and then this is the proposed on this side where it's a bit more built up um, in the drawing. Um, the building as well is slightly raised off the ground and I'm thinking you could have these um, small railway sleeper uh, uh, type beams that could just lie really nonchalantly on the ground. Um, raising the building up meaning uh, zero excavation on the ground. Um, so preserving uh, uh, the ground as it is and not um, digging into it using uh, a really heavy duty foundation system, which one might think is a great thing to do because, well, if you've got high risks of hurricanes and, uh, uh, and lots of quite destructive winds, we wanna embed buildings and uh, make them like fortresses, which is um, something that I'm not trying to do in this case. Um, but if we raise the building up by uh, 300 millimeters or so. Um, I, I think it could be a really nice subtle step up into the building and it could really encourage an inside outside way of living um, with uh, yourself and nature. Um, and access to the building could be totally accessible as well by raising it up just by, uh, just by the height of a single step. Um, we could have ramp systems that bring it, that can bring people into the building. And I think, if you were using this space, I think that could also be a really uh, nice way to leave and enter the building as well. Um, just being able to either just step down onto the grass or um, I can just imagine that if you're, you know, in bare feet, nice hot day. <laughs> uh, I think that'd be a really nice experience. Um, and also if you raise uh, the floor in a way, the floor becomes a platform. And I, I saw a lot of that work in Australia recently where they're really taking advantage of this ability to raise up floors and, uh, and and tread them on the ground lightly, no foundation as such, but just really sophisticated stilt systems. Um, and you can actually start to think about the circulation. So in this case, the interior floor of the proposed building here can extend out and wrap around into the existing um, and raise uh, uh, raise the person up off the floor again. Um, if, you, if you've got a person standing in this kind of parameter, they can use this space for morning yoga or some form of meditation or just to stand outside, sit down perhaps and just read a book in, in what is already that really serene, lovely uh, space on this side here, which is existing. Um, other things that I'm thinking about are uh, really minimal furniture finishes, so maybe like one constant stove system with a basic flue. Uh, everything else might be quite ad hoc, um, and and you might just use the small futon beds and and uh, different um, really lightweight furniture that one can move around and clear quite easily. If there's a community event going on or a small uh, yoga class, for example, separate toilet facilities and shower facilities, which I'm still understanding how that's going to work um, and how that could how that could look particularly with the roof pitch i was doing some work on it recently uh, just thinking about how the drainage system could work uh, as water comes down in heavy rainfall um, how can it get dispensed around here i think when i talk about the plan i can talk about ideas to bring in roof uh, like wall like water uh, uh, large walker but buckets and, and canisters that we could uh, start reusing the water that we collect. I think as well, just looking at it, I think the roof pitch potentially might even have to be steeper. I was reading recently about um, how a steeper roof pitch actually minimizes the amount of uh, sun uh, that can get trapped um, on, flat, on flatter roofs, uh, which uh, heats up buildings uh, much quicker. 
uh, it also allows for rainwater to drain off much faster. So I think in this case, I'm looking at this roof pitch, it might actually be too shallow and it might need to raise up a little bit, but um, I'll see how that looks uh, and feels. Um, also, I spoke a little bit about this concept of sharing uh, the wall and the experience and in a very crude sketch here, which I don't actually, I don't think you can see. So I might just quickly draw it out again. Um, I spoke about this concept of sharing a wall uh, and what we got is a, we got an existing wall here. Uh, with a really lovely um, material palette to it. It's like a, a stone uh, finish um, and uh, that continues to wrap around in this formation. But in, in the building on this side over here, I want people to still, I want people to still be able to experience this wall. Um, I don't want to shut them off from that experience, but equally, what I don't want to happen is for there to be any kind of structural pressure on these existing walls. So I'm working with a kind of timber uh, uh, column system whereby you could actually, uh, what's a good pen to use? Let's draw like this. If you could implement little uh, timber columns along the wall, these would allow someone to or well, not someone, but a building to uh, support uh, itself uh, and its roof. Perhaps we can see it through the paper, actually. We've got these timber columns that extend up from the ground and they, uh, they, they rest uh, flush with the, uh, with the existing wall, wall here. Uh, and these are the timber columns that I just mentioned. And what it means is that when you're standing in the space and we're looking at it in plan here, we can still touch and experience this wall, um, but it's not uh, under any uh, form of pressure um, from supporting the, the roof structure above. So that's a system that I'm trying to work out and understand how that works. Um, yeah, and then I think the final the final two things I wanna just talk about quickly are the, the choice of roof material. I saw a lot of uh, Australian buildings, uh, some of the work done by Rich, Richard Laplastia and um, Glenn Murcott, for example, they just use very simple uh, like aluminium sheets or um, uh, other uh, very um, lightweight, durable metals that can be found locally. You get a lot of this in the Caribbean as well. So I still want to make use of that. So the roof can be very, very um, basic and lightweight. And uh, I really love that. It's got a real kind of um, very basic agricultural feel, but uh, it really fits in with um, the place in which we're talking about. Um, the materials, uh, some of the ones that I'm thinking about are really basic, um, like like wood boarding. Um, I don't just want to say timber at this point, um, but I haven't done enough research yet to really be so specific on what types of wood uh, we can use here. Um, but the fact that there's already an existing bamboo canopy, I start to wonder if bamboo might actually be uh, a, a, a possible material that we can find locally as well. And um, I also wanted to just briefly mention uh, the inclusion of these, I don't know what you'd call them, I'm still trying to research them, but I've, I've drawn them out anyway. Um, they're these like wingtip, um, um, oh God, what would you call them? They're, uh, they're almost like um, tree canopies that, uh, so they, they, they are attached to uh, the timber columns um, that are structurally supporting the roof. And uh, what they do is they, um, uh, using this very thin, uh, uh, either a kind of steel material or, or wood again, um, they help to support the roof um, uh, as the, uh, as the rafters um, move up towards the pitch. But on this one here in particular, I was thinking about ways in which it could elegantly extend out um, into the exist, into the uh, a new proposed uh, uh, utility area, which is um, just about separate from the main proposed space here. Um, and they could almost be plain like, so I'm starting to kind of think about how that could work. Um, and this one here could be a bit more simple. 
but yeah, this is where I'm at, at the moment. Um, I just thought I'd make a little uh, video just building on some of the things I spoke about in the previous two ones. And um, yeah, just, uh, you know, it's a pleasure for me to bring people into um, some of the things that I'm just kind of working on in my own time. Some of the things that I'm, think, you know, inspired by um, and just ultimately trying to uh, learn more about um, uh, the importance of architecture in in uh in 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 hot caribbean places and um i think this is what i'm interested in as as a young designer so um i think with these videos i just want to make a quick point and just say a lot of this is for my own learning and my own benefit and i hope that i can um, benefit others um by just talking about some of my own things that i pick up in my research and i hope one day to see these buildings being designed and uh, built and helping out uh, local communities um, within these uh, within these Caribbean nations and that would be uh, that would be incredible but um, yeah this is the section and I will um, work towards developing the plan and showing you where I'm getting up to with that uh, uh, shortly so yeah thank you for watching um, please leave some feedback um, and uh, yeah I will look I will look forward to filming another video. So cool. Um, thank you.